In this video, I'm going to talk about which hosting is the best for WordPress and what exactly this hosting is. Why should you worry about hosting and how hosting impacts your website, be it your WordPress website or any other website for that matter. Before I explain you what exactly hosting is and why hosting is important and which hosting to use, I'm going to talk about what exactly is hosting. So there is a concept of client and a server. Client is basically the person who is consuming the website. Server is a person who owns the website and physical location of that website. So basically server will contain all the files which are responsible for generating HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Your server will generate some of the data in the form of HTML, CSS and JavaScript and it will send it to the client. Client will in turn parse that content and that content will then be served to you through your browser in the form of a very beautiful web page. So client is responsible for consuming the website and viewing the website. Server will query the database. It will go to the database, maybe query the database to fetch some specific records based on the client's request and then it will send it back to the client. So this is a very simple process which occurs in almost every type of website in any type of hosting. You need a server to store the files which will serve the client and this is required to host your website and this server is something that we call hosting. Now that you know what exactly hosting is, let's understand why hosting is important. Choosing a best hosting is important because it impacts your site speed and your site speed is directly proportional to your Google search rankings. Any website wants to rank in Google search and generate more and more traffic, be it a Facebook, be it Google or any blog that you are writing, you want your website to generate as much as traffic as possible. And in order to do that, you will want your hosting to work best. You want it to be very fast and you want your users to have good experience while using your website. Now there is this concept of CDN, which stands for content delivery network. Let me explain what exactly is CDN and how it can make your website really fast. Let us say I have a server in Alaska. From Alaska, let us say there is a user. User will get the data directly from the Alaska server. Now consider a case where Australian users are requesting data from the Alaska server. What do you think will happen? The data will go from Alaska server all the way to Australia. And yes, it will impact the site speed. In a very similar way, if an Indian user comes, the data will go from Alaska all the way till India. And yes, it is going to impact the speed of your website. What is the solution? A very basic solution is to cache the data whenever first request is made in India and also in Australia. So whenever a second user or third user or fourth user comes back to receive the same web page, he will receive the cached version directly from India, which will be cached in India and Australia respectively. This way, the website will be very fast and your users will have the best experience out there because they are going to receive data directly from their country instead of receiving it from Alaska. So these are some of the factors that you need to consider while choosing a hosting for any website. It might be WordPress website, it might be say Flask website, Django website, you might be working with Angular or React. It might even be as simple as a static website. You need to choose the best hosting whenever it comes to your website. Now that you know what hosting is, let's understand what types of hostings exist in the market. The first hosting I want to talk about is the cheapest one and it's called shared hosting. The concept of shared hosting is very simple. Your hosting provider will give you a server and he will give the same server to other clients such that all the clients are going to use the same physical resources which will be shared amongst all the users. Now there might be 100 users, 1000 users or even 10,000s of users using the same server, same machine, the speed might be impacted. But it is the cheapest form of hosting. This type of hosting is intended for hobby websites, websites with non-serious projects. Let us say you want to host something but you are not very serious about it. And there are some of the websites which you know that only few people will use. Let us say you have a team of five people and you are deploying a website for five people you might want to use shared hosting because first it is not a very critical website so you don't want it to be up all the time and it is going to save you a lot of money because it's shared hosting it's shared among different people and all those people are using the same server so you are happy your hosting provider is happy as he makes a lot of money by charging all the customers for the same resources now there is second type of hosting called cloud hosting cloud hosting is a new type of hosting in the market a concept where your site lives on the cloud that is your hosting provider will say that you want me to host this website on my resources? You'll say, yeah, I want to host this website on your resources. He'll take the website and he'll host it simply and give you a link. Now you should not worry about how he's doing it, how he's managing everything. It's on the cloud and it's available and you can even scale it up such that if a lot of users comes to your website, your users will not be impacted, but definitely you'll have to pay more by scaling up. This is a very good option for people who don't want to understand what hosting is. They don't want to focus on all these things. They don't want to focus on tech and they just want the website to go live.
life somehow and focus on their business instead of focusing on hosting tech cloud and all these things now the third type of hosting i want to talk about is vps it stands for virtual private server now let's understand what it is your hosting provider will give you ssh access to a server which actually will not be a real server it will be a virtual server how does it work your hosting provider will have some infrastructure in the data center and from that data center he will somehow give you access to a virtual private server basically he is running a software behind the scenes and he is giving multiple people access to his resources by providing virtual private servers it will seem to you as if you have a 2 gb say 512 tb memory and disk space but it will actually not be a physical server it will be a virtual private server but you will have no way to see that it is a virtual server it will just work like a dedicated server of 2 gb ram 512 gb of storage or maybe 1 tb of storage or maybe 8 gb ram 1 tb storage and it is going to be cheap because your hosting provider will actually share the ram and resources and other stuff he has the option to do that is what i mean and which is why on the same infrastructure he will serve a lot of customers but hosting providers customers will see that server as a dedicated server which will be a virtual server actually but it is going to be cheap it just works fine and i personally like virtual private servers a lot because it helps you practice linux and also it is one of the best options out there with minimum outage sometimes yeah you might see the resources bottleneck but again it's a best option sometimes specifically when you want to prototype something and understand how things are working behind the hood then comes dedicated hosting and in dedicated hosting you actually get a server which you own it is a dedicated server you get the physical 2 gb of ram or 8 gb of ram or 16 gb of ram whatever you want to do with the machine will be physically done with the machine nobody is sharing that machine your hosting provider has that machine ready for you and you are paying for that machine you are paying for the resources you are paying for the electricity consumed for that machine and you have ssh access to that machine nobody else is using it there is no software installed you get to decide what to do with your machine your hosting provider has left that entire machine for you now there is a concept of managed hosting and it's my personal favorite when it comes to wordpress what exactly is managed hosting managed hosting means that your provider will say that this particular website will be hosted by us you don't have to worry about anything let us say i want to write a blog called blogwithharry.com blogwithharry.com will be given to that person who is giving me managed wordpress hosting and all this will occur through a dashboard definitely let us say i am buying elementor hosting i want elementor hosting which is a managed hosting for wordpress i'll go to the elementor dashboard i will simply host my website i will get a link and a link to the wp admin i don't have to worry about errors i don't have to worry about php i don't have to worry about which database is installed i don't have to worry about auto updates which might bring your website down i don't have to worry about all these things i can simply go to the dashboard and manage my website through my wordpress dashboard it's easy it's for pros and also it saves you from a lot of errors because no matter how good of a developer you are you will encounter errors and when it comes to wordpress you might see php errors you might see mysql errors and sometimes your plugins might be the reason of your errors manage wordpress hosting will solve all these issues for you because it's being managed by your hosting provider your hosting provider says to you that you want to host five wordpress websites right just pay us for the five wordpress websites and we'll give you the wordpress dashboard and whatever is required by you you don't have to worry about vps you don't have to worry about which code is going where you don't have to worry about php versions you don't have to worry about which mysql line is throwing which error everything is managed by your hosting provider and it is really very reliable because your hosting provider knows much better than you what problems are being hosted in your servers an average typical user might fail to deliver the website with 100 percent uptime but your hosting provider will not fail because they have been doing this for years and elementor hosting is one of the best hostings out there because you get elementor pro plan with elementor hosting i recommend elementors managed hosting because first of all it is managed and if you want to host a wordpress website elementor hosting is the best out there hands down for nine dollar 99 cents you are getting managed hosting you are getting elementor pro features and it is optimized for elementor you might go for some other hosting provider and install elementor there but it is never going to be better than managed elementor hosting with elementor add-ons because elementor hosting is optimized for all these things so if you're looking for a wordpress website you might want to buy managed wordpress hosting from elementor and you have four plans in elementor hosting one is basic then business then we have grow and then we have scale if you want to get started with elementor hosting you can go with the basic plan otherwise you can go with the business plan you get more storage in business plan and more number of monthly visitors now i see a lot of hosting where they say 
we have unlimited bandwidth you can have as many users as you want but in my personal opinion there is no free lunch and there is always some sort of limit at place you cannot have unlimited users on your website for say 10 dollars or 15 dollars never it's not possible and one thing i like about elementor is that they specifically mention that your basic plan will be able to handle at least 25k monthly visitors then your business website will be able to handle at least 50k monthly visitors if you want grow plan then you get three websites with 75,000 monthly visitors and if you want to scale you are basically running a wordpress websites business you can go for the scale plan which in my opinion is great because you get to host 10 websites for $49.99 $5 per website what else you want from them and all this comes with elementor pro which is cherry on the cake if you're using WordPress, there is a good chance that you will use Elementor. And what I like about this is that Elementor is included with all the plans, be it the basic plan or scale plan, you get the Elementor Pro. Another cherry on top of this cherry is that you get the best experience because Elementor hosting is optimized for Elementor Pro plugin. So there is a lot of value included, to be honest, if you go for Elementor hosting. So I'll give the link in the description and you can simply check it out for different hosting plans from Elementor. And let me know in the comment section what you think do you use elementor for your websites and do you agree with me when i say elementor hosting is the best hosting plan for wordpress now let's conclude this video by talking about different factors that might impact hosting of your website the very first factor i want to talk about is that do you want a basic prototype of your website or do you want to host a serious website if you want to host a serious website with as less downtime as possible you might want to go for elementor hosting or some sort of serious hosting but if you want to just prototype your website you are in college you want to show it to your teacher just for an hour you might want to go for shared hosting it is going to be the best for college students who are not looking for some serious websites they are learning they are simply showing the assignment to the teacher sometimes you also might want to build a website as a prototype to show your boss or to show somebody or just to experience how wordpress and elementor works you can go for shared hosting because it is going to be the cheapest now let us say you start a hobby blog and you don't have a lot of money in your pocket you might want to go for cloud hosting because cloud hosting plans are really good these days and also you might go for a vps because you get a vps for four or five dollars there are different type of services to get vps you can go search for different hosting providers who are providing the vps services but you got the point you will learn a lot of linux if you are working with VPS plus VPS are cheap you can do different things on the same VPS because I'll tell you an incident where I was using a VPS for my Python programming I was doing some WordPress hosting on that and also I had some notes hosted on the same VPS and I was using this $5 VPS for all bunch of different things I was using it as a Google Drive clone because I was storing a lot of files in there and there was a Python HTTP server which I was using to download files so in a $5 VPS you can get a lot of things done I don't want to open my laptop all the time i sometimes want to use these type of vps where i can do something which will run overnight i don't want to run my laptop overnight for one it might harm my laptop secondly i don't want to take the risk of turning on my laptop all the time because i don't want my electricity to go through my computer and my socket board all the time might have nothing to do with you but this is my personal opinion i prefer vps if i want to run an overnight python program or an overnight build process it's simply easy for me simply go and log into the ssh terminal of the vps and you are good to go simply run the program whatever you want to do run it through no hub program ampersand press enter close the vps shut down your computer wake up and see how much that process ran as simple as that secondly the location of data center is also important there are some hosting providers who do not provide cdn you might want to check for that and also there are some hosting providers where cdn locations are very limited you don't want to choose a provider who are not providing their cdn services or who are not providing services in important parts parts of the world the third thing i want to talk about is customer support whenever you are choosing hosting customer support is really very important you might think that i might not need customer support but whatever hosting you use customer support is very important what if you are making some mistake everything is working fine but you are just not able to figure something out and you want to know how this particular thing will happen in certain dashboard and you want to figure out how to do a certain thing in element dashboard or say some other hostings dashboard how will you do that you might want to talk to customer customer support and it really feels good and you will be highly satisfied while buying the hosting if you know that for me a 24 7 support is ready to answer the questions the fourth thing i want to talk about is the dashboard dashboard should be very user friendly i have seen some hosting providers who provide minimal dashboard and sometimes the important functionalities are hidden for example let us say i want to reinstall wordpress or reset my website that option will be hidden deep within some options you don't want to buy those hostings because it will take a lot of your time plus 
always go for reliable hosting so that even if you're learning the dashboard, you are ready to host the websites of your clients or your future websites to the same sort of hosting. Now, last but not the least, I would like to talk about emails. Let us say I am buying a website called blogwithharry.com. I might want to get an email address, harry at the rate blogwithharry.com or support at the rate blogwithharry.com. These things are really very important because email marketing and email is very important these days. A lot of companies these days generates millions of dollars through email marketing. So email marketing is really important and for getting email marketing to work, you will need to get your email and easier it is to set up your email, better it is. So always choose a hosting provider which is providing you the email services. Elementor hosting provides their email services which in my opinion is a very good thing. So that was all about hosting and which type of hosting you should choose for your websites. Let me know in the comment section what you think about Elementor hosting and do you even want to consider Elementor hosting in the future? Because I have mentioned my reason of choosing Elementor hosting in this video but what do you think after watching this video and which type of hosting do you think is the best? I hope you found this video insightful. Thank you so much guys for watching this video and I will see you next time.